If you've been following this channel for a while, you've heard me talk about chocolate a lot. It's one of my absolute favorite foods. And in my opinion, it's one of the most delicious foods you can eat on the plant paradox. In fact, it's something I eat every single day. But even after giving you the go ahead to eat plenty of bittersweet chocolate, I'm still getting lots of questions about chocolate. So today, I wanna to put together a quick chocolate 101 for you. But first I wanna ask you a question. Are there any other health topics you'd like to know more about? If so, reply in the comments and let me know what you're curious about. After all, I created this channel for you and I wanna make sure you're benefiting from it. So if there's anything you wanna know, go ahead and leave a comment below. Now, I know you're here for the chocolate, so let's get right to it. Chocolate 101 with Dr. Gundry. First of all, what kind of chocolate can you eat? The best kind, bittersweet chocolate. It's like I always say about leafy greens and other vegetables, more bitter, more better. And when it comes to chocolate, it couldn't be more true. Your chocolate should always be at least 72% cacao. Personally, I'd prefer it to be above 80% cacao, though I understand that's too bitter for a lot of people. But wait, chocolate has sugar, right? Well, if possible, look for chocolate that's sweetened with stevia or monk fruit. Lily's is a great brand. But if you're not able to find stevia sweetened chocolate, that's okay. Just buy the most bitter regular chocolate you can handle. There'll be a little sugar in it, but the amount of sugar is pretty negligible. And if you're only eating a little square of chocolate a night, it's not a huge deal. The benefits will outweigh the drawbacks. Is there any milk chocolate I can eat? Well, the truth is I haven't come across much Plant Paradox approved milk chocolate. For one, milk chocolate is significantly higher in sugar than dark chocolate. But even if it's stevia sweetened, milk chocolate is often made with milk that has casein A1, making it terrible for your health. Plus, the milk will bind to the polyphenols in chocolate, ruining those health benefits. Now, if you're running around Southern Europe and you find a stevia sweetened chocolate made and sold there, chances are you'll be okay. But remember, you won't get the polyphenol benefits. And if you do find that chocolate, write in and tell me about it. What about white chocolate? There's exactly one place that white chocolate belongs, and that's the trash can. Not only is it loaded in sugar, but it's got none of the health-boosting polyphenols that dark or even milk chocolate has. Plus, white chocolate bars have about as much milk as milk chocolate, sometimes even more. And if it's A1 milk, that just spells trouble for your health. So that harmless looking white chocolate bar is simply a lose-lose for your body, especially your gut. And in my opinion, it tastes pretty lousy too. Can I eat cocoa butter? If you can find pure raw cocoa butter, absolutely. Like coconut oil, it's just fine to eat in moderation and adds a really interesting flavor to foods like adding just a hint of chocolate, but no heat. But if you're into baking, it actually makes a pretty good butter substitute. Good news if you're a vegan chocoholic. And you can cook with it like you would any other oil. But like I said, it adds a pretty interesting flavor, one you may or may not enjoy. But it's rich in some pretty interesting phytochemicals and fatty acids. So if you're into the flavor, go ahead and add it to your pantry. Just remember, when it comes to healthy fats, nothing, and I mean nothing, beats olive oil. So you shouldn't use cocoa butter instead of good old extra virgin olive oil. But you don't have to avoid it either. What's the story with cocoa powder? For some reason, people are really confused about cocoa powder, probably because there are so many different varieties on the market these days. 
And when it comes to supporting your health, one type really is a cut above the rest. And one should absolutely be avoided at all costs. What should you avoid? Sweetened cocoa powder. You know, the kind people use to make hot chocolate. For one, it's loaded in sugar. One popular brand has over 30 grams of sugar in just a quarter cup of powder, making it almost all sugar. Plus, you find cocoa mix or powdered cocoa rather than actual cocoa powder. You're getting more than just chocolate and sugar. That's because a lot of these shelf-stable mixes have A1 milk in them, as well as stabilizers and other additives that are often made from ingredients like soy. And if that weren't enough, most of these mixes are made with the wrong kind of cocoa powder, Dutch cocoa. You may also see it labeled as European style cocoa, alkalized, black cocoa, or Dutch process. And Dutch cocoa is cocoa it's treated with an alkaline solution to neutralize its pH and mellow out its flavor. It also makes for a richer color. Now, a lot of people find Dutch cocoa to be delicious, but there's a problem. That alkaline treatment does more than just change the pH of chocolate. It zaps all the stuff that makes it healthy too. So, you won't enjoy the incredible benefits that come from eating dark chocolate. So, what's the solution? Natural cocoa powder, also known as non-Dutch cocoa. Good news, not only is this stuff even more delicious than Dutch cocoa, in my opinion, but here in the U.S., it's more widely available. Brands like Hershey's and Ghirardelli both use non-Dutch natural cocoa powder. It's a little lighter in color, but don't be fooled. The flavor of natural cocoa powder is complex, robust, and fruity. It's fantastic. And because it hasn't been scientifically tampered with, it's incredibly nutritious too. Unsweetened cocoa powder is one of the highest polyphenol foods on the planet. Just remember, chances are you're going to want to add a little bit of stevia, monk fruit, or xylitol to anything you're cooking with cocoa powder. On its own, it's pretty bitter, like an unsweetened chocolate bar. But it's great in a chocolate almond cake, believe me. Now, before I go, let me answer one last question. How much chocolate can I eat? The answer, have a little piece, about this size every single night if you want. Just remember, more bitter, more better. And if it's less than 72% cacao, it's a sugar bomb and best avoided. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you and my extra dark chocolate.